Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. After their visit to New York, Harry and Meghan headed to the small island of Canoan in the Caribbean archipelago nation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The island is said to be where billionaires go to escape millionaires. The Mirror tells us the couple were photographed by an onlooker who saw them leave a food store in the Sandy Lane Yacht Club and Marina in Glossy Bay. The royal couple were said to be affectionate with one another as they enjoyed some downtime with their two young children. An onlooker told the Daily Mail, They looked happy as Harry walked out of the shop. He slightly bumped into one of the barrels outside and they both giggled and Megan reached for his hand. They just looked very happy to be having a holiday together. The environmentally conscious couple were seen flying into Atlanta on a private flight on Monday as they returned from the island of escaping from millionaires. Body language expert Judy James told Pod Save the King, They are clearly happy together, but in terms of the way they want to brand themselves, I think they're slightly lost. I think Harry, his body language recently, he maybe didn't remember when you're not a royal anymore, you do have to look after yourself, work out on your own choreography, and there's not people walking around whispering into your ear. This is so-and-so, and they've been building their allotment for the past year. I think he's probably forgot how a royal in their life is made easy in the way of being ferried around, and all they have to do is pretty much stand there and smile and chat to people. I think he and Meghan quite rightly. I still feel it's a shame that they're not in the royal family doing this. They threw themselves into change and being a bit of a revolution. Tactile, they're lovely, romantic, sexy PDAs. They look like real people and they're very good fun. And they actually did make William Kate back in the day look a bit stuffy. You know, it was like, why don't you just go out there and hug people and everything like that? But I think they might just be realizing that mistake. The New York Post thinks we are getting closer to Meghan's comeback. Royal biographer Emily Andrews told Woman magazine, It was no accident that over the summer we saw rather more of Meghan than for all of the past year. She has decided she wants to live her life much more openly. And the relaunch by her new Hollywood power broker agency, William Morris Endeavor, was started with a series of August photographs and reports to maximize plans for a new money-making venture. GB News sourced an insider discussing the failure of the Archetypes podcast. The insider said... The Sussexes haven't talked about it publicly, but it was humiliating for them both. The Spotify failure put a fire under both of them to keep moving forward. Harry and Meghan are retooling, retrenching and preparing to change course in their efforts to establish themselves and their production company Archwell as serious players across multimedia platforms. Expect them to come out swinging in the new year. Meanwhile, Kate was being all fabulous at the Rugby World Cup quarterfinals in France. This is the Princess of Wales' second time at the tournament where she debuted her new fall haircut. People reports Kate's appearance at the rugby game came one day after her husband, Prince William, stepped out in France to watch Wales compete against Argentina in the quarterfinals. The separate games are no surprise as the Prince and Princess of Wales have a rugby rivalry in their household. While Kate is patron of the union and league that governs the game in England, Prince William has been the patron of Welsh Rugby Union since 2016. Princess Kate replied coyly, I'm not competitive at all. Some French fans suggested Kate divorce William. One man held up a sign in French that read, Divorce and marry me. His friend next to him holding up a sign that said in English, No, not him, Kate, but me. The day before, William and George tried to comfort Wales players after they crashed out of the Rugby World Cup. The princes visited the dressing room to try and comfort the distraught players. Retiring fly half Dan Bigger wrote a column for the Daily Mail saying, Prince William and George came in and that wasn't the easiest gig they'll get. No one had much to say. Palace Intrigue will be right back. Some social media mans are bemused by the trailer for season six of The Crown, which has the caption, It's not a choice, it's a duty. One posted, It was a choice for Harry. And another added, Guess no one told Harry about duty, made his choice. While Heart of Invictus reportedly did not do well for Netflix, an anonymous producer told The Daily Beast, Royal content is massive for them, and they probably would have signed Harry and Meghan for the documentary anyway. But The Crown is one of the biggest shows, and signing Harry and Meghan certainly had a halo effect on its credibility. Variety showed off some pictures of the new season, giving us first looks at Harry and William standing with Dominic West as Prince Charles. More and more fans are noticing West looks nothing like Charles. Season 6 brings viewers up to the late 90s. Part 1 will follow the romantic relationship between Princess Diana and Dodie Fayed, leading up to their untimely deaths. 
The season six logline reads, Prince William tries to integrate back into life at Eton in the wake of his mother's death as the monarchy has to ride the wave of public opinion. As she reaches her golden jubilee, the Queen reflects on the future of the monarchy with the marriage of Charles and Camilla and the beginnings of a new royal fairy tale in William and Kate. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please head on over to YouTube or youtube.com and hit that subscribe button for us. It would really help us out. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue and good times. Mm-hmm.